this is such a personal story and you know to take this tragedy from your life and this immense grief and put it into this really moving narrative what was the process of that like had this been brewing for for years that you had been wanting to make this film yeah, I've, I've been wanting to tell this story for a long time. I, I was working in television, though, and so I wanted, I knew that this story was a an open and closed story and not like an ongoing narrative. So I was taking a long time to figure out how to tell it as a feature and not, you know, not in what I had been trained, how I'd been trained to write. So yeah, but it had been years and years and years that I've been like, I would talk about when my brother was at hospice with Terry and people would make that face. <laughs> and, and so I was always like, I want to tell this story. Um, but it took me a while to figure out how to do it. And so many of the details of the movie are invented. And so it was figuring out how to, yeah, do that. You know, Laura, to, even though many of the details are invented, to essentially play a version of Laura's mother in the film, you know, that's a very daunting prospect. Well, uh, fortunately, I think the... Um, it, it, the character is not based on. Laura. I mean, the the yeah. the character is the mother of of the son who is in the unit, but the personality and the very unique um, stamp that Laura put on this character, I think, is wildly different from your mother. Actually, yes. yes. So I am more of the the I represent the more fictional <laughs> <laughs> elements of of um, of the movie, and and I think it provides a counterbalance to what the narrative is doing, and how we're the audience is brought. So, you know, my character sort of swings around in personality and has a lot of different, sort of a poo-poo platter of emotion, you might say, throughout <laughs> the film. And it was just a great, a real great honor to be in it. I love that she isn't just one thing. There, there's That's so right. much nuance there that, yes, there are times where she's a bit of an obstacle for Doris, but mm -hmm. you understand where she's coming from. Yeah. And, and that, complexity, you know, what was it in the script that really spoke to you there about that? Well, I think there's just something, you know, fascinating and it tugs at my heart anyway, when people are confronted with threatening traumatic experience, mm -hmm. when they can see it coming, when they know it's inevitable, when it has infiltrated their lives to such a degree, how do they survive? How, how do you survive? How do you do that? How do you try not to take away the benefits of, of another child's life who's in the family. How do you, and what do you take from it? And comedy is, is so often a survival technique that I think all of us have probably been in situations that are so surreal when there's such craziness going on that's very serious around you that the only thing you can do is laugh. I mean, the only thing you can do is just sort of throw up your hands and go, good Lord, how is, the, how is all of this happening at the same time? So it was, um, and I saw that very clearly in the script. It was, you know, and it's a, a very complicated character that she put together. And I was appreciative that it was, a, you know, a, a sort of archetype within her story, but not a, a real person within her story. So it gave me, actually, as an actress, a larger lane in which to sort of fly around in. Yeah, because I wanted her to be Doris's adversary, but I didn't want her to be the audience's adversary. You know, I wanted the audience to feel for Christine the whole time, um, even though she is blocking Doris's wants. Yeah. Well, and I think that you, the approach to grief in this film is is so fascinating. Um, you know, you definitely have expressed grief through comedy, uh, through many parts of the film, and I think that's extremely meaningful. Like, how important is comedy to you in terms of dealing with these more painful emotions? I mean, it's it's a survival tool. It's exactly <laughs> what Laura said. I mean, I I tend to laugh at like the most inappropriate things. I mean, that I, I get through the hardest moments of my life. I'm, I'm, you know, crying with laughter. It's always been a coping mechanism for me. It's it's like the, how I developed my personality was through coping. It's, my personality is a coping yeah. mechanism. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a, it's a life jacket. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. And, you know, I love some of the, the references that you, you brought to this. The, the fact that you mentioned that Ho Xiao Xian's The Time to Live and The Time to Die oh was God. an influence on this. Combining that with Pinellas County, that's like my aesthetic. <laughs> that is what I love. It's the most beautiful movie ever. Yeah, no, we watched it a bunch. The DP and I, Bruce Francis Cole, watched that movie a bunch. And we were like, how can we use this idea that this genius is doing in this coming of age American film, you know? Um, yeah, really inspired by him.